Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 060. And on this one, I'm gonna have a go at fixing the transit. Now, hopefully you've seen it, but basically when we were picking up the trailer last week, we had an issue where this started getting horrific and it's diesel knock. We thought it was like rod knock, but it's just diesel knock. Uh, and it's significantly down on power. It feels like it's about half the power that it normally has. Doing some Googling, turns out that the fuel pump timing solenoid or the, the thing that advances the diesel timing um, plays up and causes these symptoms. Actually, I'll start it up and I'll try and show you guys what it's doing. And it's 400 degrees here today. So she starts fine and idle it sounds fine. Ah, uh, there it is. You just get a, a particularly loud diesel diesel knock. Yeah, basically it just sounds like a tractor. Which makes sense, and from what I understand, it's pretty much just running really, a really retarded fuel timing. And being a diesel, all of its power comes from the fuel. You can hear it there, like it's oh, struggling to get up the hill. But yeah, because it's not advancing its fuel injection, um, it's pretty much just starving of diesel, and that's why we're getting the diesel knock instead of a nice clean diesel burn. So let's get it all taken apart and see if we can change the solenoid. Okay, so got the van in. Just to get into some shade, it is a killer today. It's currently 33 degrees. Um, however, first step of this job, uh, we need to get some access to the inlet manifold. That's the first part that needs to come off. We need to get the inlet manifold off and then the starter motor off and that should give us access to the fuel pump. Now, I'm not really sure about this, but I believe taking the scuttle off and this trim panel should give us some better access. So we're gonna do that because quite often, making it easier to do the job instead of struggling works out better. Anyway, I'll get on with it. So EGR, that came off pretty simply. Uh, it was just the four, actually two 10 mils on the actual exhaust connection and two eight mils on the intake manifold and then just the hose clamp coming from the charge pipe. And the intake manifold, I've never actually taken one off before. Um, basically it's just been a lot of 10 mil bolts, some of which I mustn't have undone properly. That one's still grabbing. So I'm gonna work out how to get this off. Ah, oh, you just have to pull it. Okay, so there was a pipe that was on it holding it in. So I'm gonna clip that pipe. Cool. Looks like the bolts have all stayed in. The EGR pipe makes it nice and tight. Cool. There's the intake manifold, and I look at all the bolts, which are captive, so we didn't lose any down the intakes. Interesting how. <laughs> Pardon me. Interesting how that front cylinder is particularly coked up with carbon, wet carbon. Hmm. I wonder if that's a result of this problem. Okay, so now we can actually get access to the top of the diesel pump, and I think that is important because we need to get to the wiring on this side. But the next stage is to take the starter motor off, which all happens underneath. In fact, it's probably going to be a bit of a pain to film. I will try, but uh, it's just a matter of undoing the wiring to the starter. That's what the main reason we undid the. That's the main reason we undid the battery, and we'll go from there. 
Okay, so once we've got the starter motor out, the next in line, you can actually get your head up where the starter motor sits and you can see the pump for the very first time. Now, I just sort of crack straight on with it, but what you're greeted with is this bracket here first. It's actually held on, oh, because we're dropping it. I'm sorry about the lighting, it's a terrible day today for weather. Uh, but what you're greeted with is this bracket. It has two bolts in the bottom and it should have three, now I'm not sure if they're supposed to be Torx bits or Allen key bolts, but the one on this car only had two bolts. One was an Allen key and one was a Torx bit, which added a bit of excitement to it. And then once you've got that all off, you can then get to this bracket. Now this bracket is like the main mounting piece for the pump and you basically just need to get it out of the way so that you can see the solenoid, which I'll show you now. So with that, with those two brackets off, you can now actually see the solenoid right down there at the bottom of the pump. So there's the two Torx bits that hold it in. So I'll get that pulled off and you've actually got to cut the wiring, which is what I'll do next. So here we have the new solenoid. I just thought I'd take a quick clip of it and I've cut the plug off because we've actually got to solder it onto the wiring in the van. I've got David on the job now because it, you do need to be an absolute contortionist to get to the back of the pump. Um, and he's just much fitter than I am. So he's just getting the old one out and then we should be able to bring the wires up the top here and get the new one connected. Okay, so we've got the old one out and we've cut the wires. This car's actually been repaired before. You can see where it's already got some heat shrink on the old wiring. So it's gonna have two joins. I guess it's a very common problem. So we've ended up getting caught in rain, which is now running in the shed because the car's in the middle. So we've been rushing, but we've got it all back together. We're just going to give it power. In front of the driver's seat. And there's the key. So we'll give it power, just make sure that we don't have any smoke. No smoke. Cool, you wanna try and start it? Yep, it didn't rattle. Can you rev it a bit? The seat's really bubbled. <laughs> Sounds normal. Excellent. So I've just gone back from a test drive and it's fixed. Yeah, it's quite surprising how much of a difference that. Don't want to hear anything. It's quite a surprise what a difference the timing solenoid really makes. But yeah, she revs like a new one. Um, things to take away from this, if you're gonna have attempt to doing it yourself, the getting to the back of the, the diesel pump is very, very difficult. Um, I'd probably, we did this one just on the ground. It probably would have been easier if we actually raised the van off the ground a little bit. So you weren't having to be such a contortionist to get your hand up at the back of the pump. And even you've got to get your head up where the starter motor goes so that you can see the back of the pump and it is, it's just tight. So maybe put the, put the van up on some ramps if you're going to do it yourself. Uh, other than that, take your time. It is all pretty damn easy. The only connection are the two black wires and they're not polarity based. You can run them either way and the solenoid will work how it's supposed to work which is good uh yeah guys if you've got any questions hit us up in the comments below but we managed to fix that horrific diesel knock with the van and yeah she seems to be good hopefully a bit of a cliche comment but maybe we'll get another 500,000 k's out of it
maybe. Anyway, all right guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.